Hey friends, welcome. I'm Andy Lee and this is the Bite of Bread. It's a weekly nourishment for your soul. It's the middle of the week. It's a Wednesday night. Who doesn't need a little bit of pick-me-up, a little bit of spiritual nourishment to chew on to get you through the rest of the week? We are at hump day. Hey, Deb Warren. Good good to see you and Laura Lynn. Yay, I miss you. Good to see you guys. Come on in. You have your coffee, your tea, your decaf. Do you have your strategy pants on? I got on my strategy pants. I'm not going to show you. My fleece, my favorite fleece stretchy pants. Huh, my favorite thing to put on when I get home. I hope you're all ready to study. Do you have your Bible and your journal? Have you been to wordsbyandylee.com? Have you printed off the printable for this week? Hi, hey, Stephanie. I'm glad you could join me. And Mary, good to see you, Angel. Come on over. Come on in. Hey, Tisha. Good to see you tonight. Did you get the um, Butter Bread reading plan? Did you read the article this week? It was about, what was it about? It was about finding satisfaction, finding contentment. And how we do that is by the Holy Spirit, being Holy Spirit blessed. So that's what we're talking about. Steph says she has on her yoga pants and her decaf. Isn't that awesome? Oh. It's just army blessed. Army, I mean, it's the little things, right? It's the little things in life that just make life good. So I'm thankful for, yes, yoga pants and decaf. So come on over. I'm going to pray you all up and hold your hands. And we'll get our spirits ready to, to receive what God has for us tonight. So, hey, Doris, hold my hands. I'm going to pray us up. Lord, thank you so much for bringing us through to another Wednesday. Thank you, Lord, for the word that we have, that you have given us, that the Bible and the truth, that we can study how it feeds our spirit. It feeds our hearts, Lord. And for all those who are struggling, everybody has different circumstances and hard things going on. And I pray tonight that um, Philippians 4.13, that, that you given us the strength to get through, that this will have a new meaning to them, Lord, and that your Holy Spirit will be even more and more um, tangible to us. It's in Jesus' name I pray, and all God's people said, Amen. Hey, Kiana, I'm glad you could join me tonight. Come on over. So, I've got the Bite of Bread reading plan. And as I was saying, it was all about being Holy Spirit blessed, about finding that secret to satisfaction, to that secret to contentment. I wanted to share something that um, one of my friends wrote that she commented, left a comment on my article on the website. So I want to read this to you because I thought it was just really, sorry, I'm going to grab it, really profound. Her name is Kirsten, and I'm not even trying to say Kirsten's last name. She's from Florida, and she wrote, um, my word for 2019 is faithful. She said a couple of weeks ago, I wrote as my, I wrote my thought for the week, being faithful brings me satisfaction in Christ. It's easy to think that a couple of hours with snack food in front of the TV will satisfy. But at day's end, I'm satisfied. I'm blessed when I have a deep peace because I know, because I fell into the pattern with God, what God had for me that day. Doing the good works that he prepared for me to do, or finding my rest in his presence. So I just thought that was really cool. So as we talk about where we find that satisfaction, we're going to find out that the word blessed um, has a meaning in the Greek of full satisfaction, meaning fully satisfied. And that to me, that means contentment, having that deep peace and joy and contentment. All of these words we're going to play with tonight that they all um they all have a place together 
right? And so our bite today, um, our bite for today, for tonight, was Philippians 4, 11 through 13. Um, and many of us know 13, but not all of us know 11, 11 through 13. But first I'm going to read, I'm going to go backwards because I'm going to go to where we know. Hey, David, good to see you at Marietta. I'm glad you could join me tonight. So if you've got your Bible, look with me to Philippians 4, 13. We know it. We love it. What does it say? Can you tell me? Do you have a t-shirt with it um, printed across it? Or do you have this in your kitchen or... I don't know, in your car, Philippians 4.13 says what? I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Now, we love that verse, don't we? Don't we love that verse? It's been taken out of context so many times, my friends, though. We've got to get back to the true meaning of this verse. This verse does not mean that it's going to help... That that God's going to help us have strength and the ability to ski down a ski slope. And I just say that because when I was 14 and I was sitting in a lodge in Colorado, my youth group had gone skiing. I don't ski. I've tried. It's awful. I just need to take off the skis and roll down the mountain. And I would have much more fun doing that. So anyway, so I just would go for fun and not go skiing. And this man saw me one day with my Bible there. And he, he says, well, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And I just want to say, you just, you just don't get it. Even at 13 or 14, however old I was, I knew that it meant more than that. And let me tell you why. Let's look at this context. I think when we see the context of this, the whole picture, Philippians 4, 11 through 13, God, we're going to go, oh, this is even better than being able to ski down a mountain. Okay, so let me read the whole thing. Philippians 4, 11 through 13. This is what Paul says. Now he's telling them, thank you so much for finally giving me the money, you know, and help me, helping my ministry. And then he says, I'm not saying this because I am in need. Everybody say need. N-E-E-D. Anybody in need tonight? A little bit of need here and there. I, I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content Somebody say content. Oh, we want that, right? I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret to being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or or in want. And that brings us to verse 13. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. So did you hear the context of the scripture of Philippians 4.13? The context has nothing to do with physical ability. It all has to do with the mental, emotional, and spiritual strength, inner strength, that Christ had given Paul where he could be content whether he was in a prison cell um, sitting in just yuck and just not getting to serve his people like he wanted to but having just to write letters to them look how God used that right um, he had learned to be content that inner strength and that's what that word means um, one of those words, the strength means there in the Greek, inner strength. Um, the word, what is that word? I've got it here for us. Um, in dynamo, everybody say in dynamo, like dynamite. It's the inner strength, he says. So, could you use a little bit of inner strength? I mean, I think most of us. Could you use a little bit of inner strength in any of some of our circumstances that we're going through? But he says, in all things, God gives me inward strength. 
uh, non, this inner strength to be content with God because he says, I know what it's like to be content. That word content means to be fully satisfied, to be fully satisfied, to not to not want or need anything to be good wherever God has you. What is that? How do you get to that place? Well, my friends, you get, he says, I, I can do that through Christ who strengthens me. And that is by the power of the Holy Spirit within him. Did he give him this strength, the power of his Holy Spirit? So there's a Greek word for fully satisfied, and it's the name or the Greek word is makarios, makarios. And this word I I found about I guess it's been almost ten years ago when I started write, writing my Mary book, um, and Mary like me. If you're not familiar, it's this one. I'm going to read some from it tonight. But when I started studying for a Mary like me, I found this word and it's within the scripture in luke 1 um 45 when elizabeth and mary when mary goes to elizabeth after she's um seen gabriel and gabriel has told her she was going to be the mother of the christ and she runs to see elizabeth do you remember that story i love that story it's one of my favorites so she runs to see elizabeth so if you want to go with me um to Luke 1 Luke 1 and 45 yeah 42 so Mary has run to Elizabeth she's knocked on the door and as soon as she does that the Bible tells us that Elizabeth's pregnant and that the baby John starts doing somersaults in her belly and she knows right away Holy Spirit tells her right away that the mother of the Messiah is standing at her door. And in verse 42, it says in a loud voice, the, she exclaimed, This is Elizabeth, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? She says, as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my, in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will come to pass. Now, y'all heard two words there. You heard blessed twice. Those are two different words in the Greek, and I think it's really interesting. The first bless is eulagio. It's where we get the word eulogy, and it means to speak well of, to be spoken well of. So that's what she first says. Mary, you are going to be spoken well of because you are the mother of the Messiah. But then she says to her, she says, blessed and she says makarios makarios is she who has believed that what the lord has said will come will be fulfilled i'm sorry will be accomplished and so that bless is different that bless is makarios means fully satisfied okay I'm, this is where i'm coming with content here fully satisfied it also was translated sometimes as happy, and in the Greeks, there was no state of Makarios until you were dead and you were on the other side um, in heaven. But in the New Testament, in our Bible, Makarios was popular, was, was possible with the presence of Jesus. And later on in Luke 1, Mary says, she starts singing, she's just praising to God, and she says, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he's been mindful of the state of his humble ser servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. That word blessed is Mary Oles. She says, from now on, all people, all generations will call me fully satisfied and content and at peace and filled up because the Lord has done this 
for me. I wanted to read tonight a little bit from um, my Mary book. Uh-oh, but I lost my place. So, I may not be reading. Let's see if I can get it. Get it for us. Um, well, I just lost my place, ladies. So, I may not be reading that. Oh, God, it's good. I just found it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Do you ever do that? You think, well, maybe I shouldn't be reading it. But then you find it and you go, okay, I should. So, let me read it to you. So, Elizabeth confirmed Mary's fate, and she praised her younger relative's faith. The final sentence in her proclamation is one that has spoken to me throughout my faith journey. Elizabeth said, Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. It's Luke 145. Write that down because I want you to chew on that, to meditate on that um, for the rest of the week. Luke 145. The Holy Spirit has tugged on my heart when I've heard these words read out loud. Blessed is she who has believed. Now remember, that's that word, makarios. These haunting words have applied to my life, but they are applicable for all of us on so many levels. Oh, why do we doubt the call of God on our lives? Why do we doubt that we are daughters of the Most High God, given new hearts and a new future? Why do we doubt that our Father God has a plan for us in building the, His kingdom? Perhaps the answer to this lack of faith is that we're not focused enough on the Word of God. Elizabeth proclaimed that Mary of Nazareth was blessed because she believed the Lord's words, right? As I meditated on this verse, a scripture came to mind. When Jesus faced Satan in the wilderness, one of the temptations he faced was to turn stones into bread after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And Jesus said, do you remember what he said? He said, it is written, man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. That was in Matthew 4.4. 4. I've been reminded again of the importance of the power of the Bible. We must claim the truth in our lives. But too often, we find ourselves believing what our emotions are telling us. You aren't anybody special. You can never change. You can't dream that. It's too big. You can't have that victory over that sin. Anybody? Have you had all that? Those little voices telling you these things? You can't be patient or full of grace. But the Word of God tells us the opposite of what our emotions so often scream. God promised He'd give, us his, give his people a new heart and His Spirit. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from your heart of stone. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. That was Ezekiel 36, 25-27. The Word promises, the Word, the Word of God, the Bible promises that with our new hearts and the Holy Spirit, we are a new creation in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.17 and more than conquerors. It says we are more than conquerors in Romans 8, 37. The one who lives in us, Jesus, is greater than the one in the world. Amen. That is 1 John 4, 4. And we have been given the divine nature. Y'all, you need to chew on that one. 2 Peter 1, 4. We have been given the divine nature. 
We are seated in heavenly places next to Jesus, even though our feet still trudge in earth's dust. Ephesians 2, 6. Oh, come on. Somebody say, glory. Did you hear those scriptures, those promises of God? They are true, but we have to hold on to them. We live in the middle of the now and the not yet, while in the skin, we will have our dark days, but they aren't our truth anymore. Can I say that again to you? We will have our dark days. Well, we're going to have those hard days, but they're not our truth anymore. Christ is our truth. <laughs> May we who have the Spirit of God within us believe these words for all they are worth. If we're living defeated, fruitless lives, we have not believed the full measure of the Word of God. If we believe His Word, if we trust His Word, we will also be blessed, will be makarios, will be fully satisfied, will be at that place of contentment that Paul knew no matter where he was, in his circumstances, and in his life. Oh, somebody say, Amen, Hallelujah. Good stuff. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mary said, one more time, 146. Mary said, generations, well, where are we? Luke 146. And Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Somebody, Y'all, somebody just needs to take that, write that scripture out, spend time worshiping the Lord, just spend time just giving Him your praise and your worship, even if you are in the worst circumstances, you're having the hardest time, worship Him through that, worship Him through that. Now, she's, when Mary says this, life is good, she's excited, she's been chosen to be the mother of Messiah, but y'all, just think what she had to walk through from then on and why, how she felt as she stood at the cross and probably questioned everything that had happened and, and that she was had been told. But she held on, I believe she held on all through that, to the hope and the truth of the word, that she believed the word that the Lord had told her. So he says, she says, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. Some of us just need a little humility in our lives. From now on, all generations will call me Makarios, will call me fully satisfied and blessed. Let me go back to to our prompt for today from Philippians 4, 11 through 13. I'm not saying this because I am need, Paul said. He said, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to, be pl to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or want, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the inner strength. The prompt I gave today was fully satisfied is a place of contentment, a place of peace. And Paul lived in that place. I don't do that perfectly. I'm not sure any of us do it perfectly, but Paul says he had found that place. He had found that place and he stayed there. Paul lived there, but Paul attributes his contentment to the one, to Jesus inside of him, who gave him the strength to endure. The Greek word here for strength is, and I said it earlier, um, in dynamo and it means inner strength so pray for holy spirit to give you in dynamo today as you face the empty places don't try to fill them yourself 
Don't try to fill them. Don't try to figure it out. Wait on Him for that supernatural filling and satisfaction that only He can give. He is our reward. He is the one who fills us and fulfills us. I think there's something there. I'm gonna may have to write about that. That and the filling and the fulfilling of Jesus in us. I I want to remind you of the scriptures that I read about um in the Mary book. Second Corinthians five seventeen says we are new creations in Christ. That means we are not just human anymore, human and Holy Spirit in us. So it's a new creation, right? We are more than conquerors, Romans 8, 37. He who lives in us is, is greater than he who lives in the world, 1 John 4, 4. We have the divine nature, 2 Peter 1, 4. And we are seated in heavenly places already, my friends. Ephesians 2, 6. We are already there. He's already put us in that place of power and authority. And he's got us there. It's done. By his grace, it's done. I wanted to close tonight with the Jesus Calling. And it's actually the Jesus Calling for today. So if you have Jesus Calling, you can read it later too. It's um, February 20th. Today is the 20th, I think, right? Anyway, so February 20th, Jesus Calling says, Learn to live from your true center in me. I'm thinking about the core. We always talk about the core, and we want the core to be strong physically. But I'm thinking we need our core, our spiritual core, to be strong. And how do we do that? We do that by believing and trusting the Word and Yielding the Holy Spirit in us. So learn to live from your true center in me. I reside in the deepest depths of your inner being. An eternal union with your spirit. It is at this deep level that my peace reigns continually. You will not find lasting peace in this world around you. In circumstances or in human relationships. The external world is always in flux under the curse of death and decay. But there is a gold mine of peace deep within you waiting to be tapped. Take time to delve into the riches of my residing presence. I want you to live increasingly from your real center for my love has an eternal grip on you. I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. Amen. Hold my hands. I want to pray you up tonight. Father, we just thank you and praise you for this word, that you are our strength, that you fill us up and you give us the inner strength for, for that peace and that contentment, no matter what the circumstances is around us, that we are blessed and that you fill us up. We are makarios because of Holy Spirit residing in us. Mary was makarios. She had the actual Christ child in her. But now on the other side of the cross, we have you within us to thank you, Lord, that it's possible to have that peace. I pray for all those who are watching tonight. Lord, you know where they're at. You know the empty places. You know the circumstances. You know the heartaches. And in Jesus' name, I pray they can just take their eyes off those holes and eyes off the empty and eyes off the pain and put their eyes on you to claim these verses we've talked about tonight, to write them down, to believe them, because when they truly get to that place of trusting their word, they will be the Karyos. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you, friends. I do miss you. It's good to see you. I will not be here next week. Um, we have another um, commitment and the Beauty for Ashes retreat. 
here in Wilmington, North Carolina is March 2nd and 3rd. And so I'll be getting ready for that too. And there's just a lot going on. So there will be a blog post up on Sunday. There will be a new by the Red Reading Plan. And I will put up scriptures every day on my Facebook my, and my author page. So you can follow through with those two. But I'll be praying for you. If you need prayers, send me a personal message. I'll be praying for you. I just I, I pray tonight that you know this contentment and peace that only Jesus can bring. So thank you for joining me. Go out there. Be a threat to the enemy. Just be strong and, and peace with the Lord on Thursday and Friday. And do a Friday dance to the weekend. Anyway, love you. Thank you so much for joining. Bye.